and herald a new media network for and about Asian Americans in the capital region of New York. This show is being aired via live stream on Facebook and is being recorded via Zoom. A recording of this show will be available afterwards at our Facebook page, which is Asian American Herald of Capital District. My name is Himani Gupta Carlson, and I am a local farmer, writer, and professor of historical studies at Empire State College in Saratoga Springs. So tonight we're focusing on a topic that is very close to my heart, which are farmers markets in our region. And our guests are two market managers, Cheryl Wilby of the Schenectady Green Market and Emily Marr of the Saratoga Farmers Market. Cheryl and Emily, welcome to our show. Thank you for having us, Himani. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, it's glad, glad to have you with us. So before we get started, a few quick requests. If you are tuning in live, please feel free to submit any questions via the chat box. And please also mute your mics if they are not already muted. Guests too, if you can mute your mics when you're not speaking, that would be helpful. And I'll do my best to mute also as we're going through. So um, farmers markets have had a long history in the United States. However, they nearly disappeared after World War II with the rise of national grocery store chains. They began to reappear in the late 1970s after an act of Congress. And from about 2010 to the present, they become increasingly popular with the numbers of such markets increasing annually. So Cheryl and Emily, I was wondering if you could start by telling us a little about your farmer's market and the vital role it plays in, the, in your community. So Cheryl, um, would you like to begin? Yes, uh, that works for me. Um, so yeah, the Schenectady Green Market, uh, we started back in 2008. Uh, so we're going into our 12th year now. Uh, we're located in the heart of downtown Schenectady, right around City Hall during our, our, our outdoor market, um, which runs from May to October. And when we're indoors, we're inside the beautiful Proctor's Theater from November to April. Uh, so we usually have around 60 to 65 vendors during the outdoor market season, but due to restrictions um, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're at about 44 to 46 vendors in attendance outdoors. Um, our market is mostly volunteer led besides myself. Um, and that's a huge part of what makes the green market run is that sense of community and our volunteers really stepping up to make the market happen every Sunday. Um, and it really just shows the importance of uh, local fresh food to our community members who are helping to make the market um, a, a success every Sunday. Um, so our farmer's market, um, like any farmer's market for that matter, it's important to community um, because it allows folks to purchase directly from farmers and actually get to know the people who are growing the food that you're putting into your body and into your children's bodies. Um, it really establishes that connection of trust between um, customers and farmers, um, allowing us to just have an overall greater appreciation for the food that we're eating opposed to buying it from a grocery store where you generally know nothing about the backstory behind, behind the food that's ultimately getting to your plate. Um, lastly, I just wanted to say that um, I feel that our market is especially important to our low income communities. Um, over the years, we've really seen um, an increase in the number of EBT SNAP folks who are shopping with us. Um, and I mean, our EBT SNAP um, community members, um, they have the option to shop with us. They don't really have to. They could go to a local corner store or the grocery store and potentially purchase processed foods, but they choose to come and shop with us because they recognize the importance of fresh local food um, for themselves and for their family members. So we really try to do everything in our, in our power to um, make sure that they can have opportunities to even spend more with us and provide for their families. Um, so we participate in programs like the uh, Fresh Connect Checks program where folks get um, a $2 coupon for every $5 that they spend 
and we're working on other ways to um, increase uh, our EBT SNAP folks purchasing power at the market as well. Excellent. Yeah, the volunteer um, aspect of the Schenectady Green Market, just it's really clear. You can really see it out there. And also the commitment to SNAP is um, quite um, is quite amazing. So Emily, um, the Saratoga Farmers Market is actually quite a bit older. It just celebrated its 42nd anniversary. And so can you tell us a little bit about that market and how it, um, the role it has in the community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as you said, the, the Saratoga Farmers Market was started in 1978. Um, that does make us one of the longest running uh, farmers markets in, in upstate New York. Um, and we, since the early 2000s, we've been a year round market. Um, so we do operate uh, in the summer months, which is May through the end of October, we, we operate outdoors. Um, we're currently at the Wilton Mall, right in Saratoga Springs. Um, and in the, the winter months, we, we have a market as well from November through April. Um, and that's, that's been in the Wilton Mall as well, actually, um, this past winter season. So that's, that's been a great uh, place to have as kind of a continuous place to be for our market right now, especially with everything going on. Um, and, you know, us having to change our, our way we, uh, we are set up, um, that's definitely helped us out a lot. Um, so we, we've, as I said, we've been running since 1978 and we are a producer only market. Um, so that means that, you know, the, the person who applies to, to vend at the market has to actually produce the products they sell. Um, and we, uh, as Cheryl said, we, we do also um, participate in the, the SNAP EBT program. Um, we do give out the Fresh Connect checks as well. Um, and I will say, even though that usually does not uh, make up the bulk of, of our sales, I, I would say that we've seen um, definitely an increase with, with everything going on with coronavirus. We've definitely seen an increase in, in usage and we've seen um, new customers come in, uh, both SNAP and EBT or uh, other customers come in that, that have never visited our market before or have never shopped with us before and are now, um, and are now appreciating the the local food systems more so that's been that's been amazing to see um we've been very lucky to have been operating pretty much continuously throughout this we were closed for one week and we've been open ever since uh outdoors so um yeah so that's that's the overview of the saratoga farmers market great thank you so much so both of you have sort of hit on this a little bit but um, I'm thinking um, a lot of our viewers might not actually be familiar with the concept of a farmer's market itself. So I was wondering if you could actually talk a bit about what differentiates a farmer's market from a grocery store and what makes a producer's only market, um, as you described, Emily, different from other markets that exist in communities. For instance, flea markets, holiday fairs, artist festivals, things like that. So Emily, do you wanna um, start? Sure, yeah. So um, speaking to your first point, you know, what makes farmers markets different from, from grocery stores? Um, the biggest thing we, we always try to um, to communicate to possible customers is, you know, you get to see the the person who produced your food, and you get to see your farmer. Um, you get to see the hands that pulled the food out of the ground, um, and I think that's a pretty powerful um, thing for customers. I'm gonna say again, especially now, um, it's it's important to a lot of people to feel close to where their food comes from and to feel safe, um, to feel safe knowing where it comes from. Um, so that's that's definitely the biggest difference between us and a grocery store where as Cheryl touched upon earlier, you know, you pick something out, you don't know where it's where it's been, where it comes from. Um, and with that comes to um, our, our farmers and vendors are very transparent about how they grow their food, you know, what kind of methods they use. Um, uh, you know, some some vendors might be certified in, in organic or uh, certified naturally grown or um, things like that. Customers definitely appreciate knowing how how their food is grown. Um, and with our market, uh, we, for instance, we accept vendors out of both Saratoga County and then four counties around us. Um, so it's it's most definitely locally produced food, um, which I, I think customers 
appreciate more than ever um, knowing that our local food systems are are thriving and are still going and our you know our producers are are producing as they always are um, so so I would say that for for the biggest differences between us and grocery stores um, and if if Cheryl wants to add on to that you're you're very welcome to <laughs> yeah Cheryl go for it <laughs> yeah I feel like Emily pretty much touched on a lot of the points. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate that element of traceability, knowing where your product is coming from. Um, often with grocery stores, there's a very long process involved with the food getting to your plate. So farmers markets are just all about shortening that supply chain and ultimately reducing the food miles associated with the food that you're consuming. Um, I was thinking that I might touch on a bit about uh, the pr producer market aspect that you brought up, Himani, um, and just talking a bit about how we um, pretty much vet for <laughs> folks that come to our market and want to sell and how we make sure that we only have producers um, at the market. So pretty much, um, just to give an example, if you're a farmer who is selling vegetables, um, you can't just purchase vegetables from another farmer and try to pass it off as your own and sell it at the market. Um, and to make sure that things like this don't happen, we do conduct inspections of vendors, um, especially any new vendor that's starting with us. Um, we're going out to your farm, we're seeing the land that you're growing on. If you're um, someone who's producing wine, we wanna see your vineyard. We wanna see where you're bottling that product to make sure that you are actually producing it. Um, so that's, that's really important to us that we really keep that producer only model at our market. Yeah, excellent. Just a brief follow up for Cheryl. Um, so Saratoga's idea of local, local, and I kind of know this because I've been involved with the market, that market for many years, is that, um, six counties, um, Saratoga and the five that surround it. I was wondering how um, Schenectady defines local. If we define it by a certain mile radius around um, Schenectady County. So like the furthest that we have a vendor um, coming to market is like Western Massachusetts, which is about an hour to an hour and a half, but nothing more than that. Um, but yeah, that's the furthest out. We'll have a vendor coming to the market. Okay, great. So um, before the pandemic, there was a lot of concern that farmers markets were like actually losing their vitality that people were not interested in cooking and maybe didn't particularly appreciate the differences between that you have all you've both pointed out so strongly between local farm foods and national chains grocery store chains um you know and price was often a big factor that went into that and so i was wondering if each of you could talk just a little about how your market had been addressing this concern. Um, and I'm gonna do a sort of, bef I can't do a before pandemic and after because we're still in it. But what were you doing um, to kind of deal with that concern before the pandemic? And then what's been happening um, since March um, through now? So Cheryl, I'm gonna toss the ball to you first this time. Yeah, I mean, prior, to the pandemic, you were allowed to have community tables at market and folks could um, get to see demonstrations of how you can use and incorporate different products from the market. So that was a great way to engage with folks and um, talk about different ways to use products at market if you're not familiar with certain items. Um, I mean, after, once the pandemic hit, obviously we could not have these things at market um, for, out of safety concerns. Um, but I just wanted to bring up that I feel like if anything, the pandemic has really shown how much people really appreciate farmers, um, farmers markets as well. Um, just being able to buy locally and knowing where your food is coming from. 
um, when we were shut down for, what was it, six weeks, we had customers constantly reaching out to us and asking us, how can we support vendors during this time? Like, we know they're hurting. How, how can we help them? Um, so it really showed like our community's dedication to our vendors and making sure that they're okay. Um, luckily, we had amazing folks and store owner, owners um, within Schenectady community who also really cared about our vendors and really helped us respond to this community need um, as soon as we possibly could. Um, I'm specifically thinking of Caroline at Schenectady Trading Co. Um, she really stepped up and um, helped us with providing a space for vendors to sell at until we were able to host the outdoor market again. So huge shout out to Caroline, thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, now that the market is actually open um, and things are running a little bit more smoothly, we're thinking about other ways that we can engage with customers again, um, considering that our options are a little bit more limited. So like, what can we do virtually? Maybe we can do cooking demonstrations or have someone walk through the market and talk to vendors and stream that live just to really have that um, added relationship between our customers and vendors, um, just building that engagement with folks as well. Yeah, it's so interesting how I feel like just in two months, the farmer's market has really become an evolving concept. It's not that crowded um, gathering place that it used to be, but it's still like a gathering place. And I know as a vendor, I've never felt so much love as I felt in the last, you know, six weeks from, from customers and others who um, come to the market. So Emily, um, I'm wondering if you could take up that question too, and just talk about, you know, what was the Saratoga market doing to emphasize the vitality of farmers markets to the community before the pandemic hit? And, you know, how has that changed or it, how, what is ongoing now during, during this time period? Yeah, um, I would say we definitely have have had a somewhat similar journey to uh, to Schenectady um, in that, you know, before before the pandemic hit, we did we did notice some uh, some loss in vitality of the farmers markets. I think, too, part of that is, um, you know, we, we have had a lot of new farmers markets crop up in the last decade or two get decades. Um, that does make it hard for for any farmers market to uh, to get a big enough audience. Um, I would say that we've, you know, we were working on very similar strategies, um, creating more more social engagement um, that's both online and offline. Um, and we we didn't really touch upon this before, but I think one one big thing, as we are saying right now, is um, that that sets us apart from grocery stores. Is we do have that social character to farmers markets, and we do have that idea of it being a, a community gathering space. And um, so so whereas a lot of our efforts were focusing on promoting that, you know, promoting activities or special theme days at the market. Um, before the pandemic hit, that's that's unfortunately not not available to us right now. Um, I would say that with with our operations changing, um, they've they've changed as just the communal outlook on farmers markets has changed as well. Um, people people know that they're not going to find the same kind of farmers market right now. And um, people know that Right now, it's all about being um, being that essential business and and providing that fresh and local food. Um, and I would say we we have also seen a huge um, huge increase in in appreciation and um, and just love for for our farmers and our vendors. Um, and I think that that just goes along with you know it. I think customers are are kind of worried about the the bigger. Um, industrial food system. Um, you've seen it with, you know, things, nothing being on the shelves in the grocery stores and um, that kind of chaos and panic, I think, didn't didn't quite reach the farmer's market because we're so local that everyone can ask their vendor, you know, when when will you have this back in stock or, um, or you know, how, how's it going for you? Like, do you, what's your outlook on on when you'll have certain items? Um, so I think, I think right now what we're focusing on as well um, 
is is that SNAP and EBT. We're um, we're seeing an increased population using that, so focusing on on strategies to uh, to advertise that, um, and kind of looking around and seeing the different populations that are are utilizing our market and and seeing how um, seeing what kind of marketing or advertising they would they would benefit from. Um, so it's. Definitely a little less social, a little less fun, but um, but right now that's that's what we are. We're an essential food service, so we have to to play by that. And and we've definitely seen a huge outpouring of love from our um, from our community. Great. So um, you both started to also hit on my next question a little bit, but um, you know, people have really talked about you know the look of the market itself both in Saratoga and Schenectady is so different now um you know in Saratoga we're in a parking lot <laughs> and our spaces are defined by parking stalls and um space between you know space between each vendor Schenectady we're in, now I'm new to Schenectady this year, this summer. I was new this winter to Schenectady, but um, it's the same location as before, but there's green tape around each stall. And as Cheryl, you mentioned earlier, fewer vendors. And so I wonder, um, you know, with all of those changes, um, what, um, you know, what is being done to kind of help make people feel like this is still, you know, um, kind of like a happy place, even if it's not like a long-term gathering place. Um, what, what are you, you know, what, what, what can you kind of do to um, keep the market be the market, even if it's not quite the market? So that's not quite what my original question was, but I think that's where we're going. So Emily, you're first. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Hamani already touched upon it. You know, our, our parking lot um, setting right now isn't the most glamorous or, or, um, or green or exciting. Um, but as I said before, we've been very lucky that we were able to, um, to keep our same location as as our winter market was in. Um, that that kind of helped us get back on track um, sooner than than some other markets. Um, because you know we just moved out outside where we had been indoors. Um, so the parking lot uh, definitely looks different from our usual market. We're usually in a in a quaint park in the in downtown Saratoga. But um, yeah, so that so the biggest thing you know the market right now looks like um, our tents are are spaced about ten to fifteen feet apart. Um, we're all outdoors. We have very designated um, entrance and exit points. Um, so that's that's a very different kind of flow that we're we're making the customers take. And and you know our big our big thing is still promoting um, getting getting your groceries and then not lingering too long um, to to avoid becoming a social gathering place. So that that includes like Cheryl touched upon earlier. You know taking away any seating or um, you know, making sure our prepared food is, is to go and not to eat at the market. Um, so in, in a way, you know, trying to, um, make our market still the market, um, in all of this with a, with a different layout, I would say it comes mostly from the people, you know, it, it doesn't come from the tents or the vehicles or, um, you know, the products aren't much different, but it, it mostly comes from the people. And I would say our vendors are, um, are still the same pretty tight knit community that that we've been and especially through all this with everyone needing to uh to change just the way they operate um it's been it's been really great to see our vendors coming together and and our customers still showing the same support if not more um than they did before so um you know now that it's getting sunnier and and warmer it's it's getting back to that nice um summer farmers market feel but you know it definitely doesn't look the same way right now and we're we're evaluating every week um you know depending on what new york state uh guides us to do as to what we can bring back. We're hoping to um, be able to bring back our non-food vendors um, as soon as we're, we're cleared by New York State. Um, and, you know, music might follow that. And we're looking forward, but we're, it's hard to plan right now because we, we just aren't giving too much, um, too much guidance. And for farmers markets especially, there hasn't been very much clear guidance on, uh, on, on what to do. So we're, 
we're trying hard to make it a, a fun space, but it's right now it's it's still an essential essential space. Yeah. Yeah, true. And I know I have noticed in Schenectady, Cheryl, that um, your active your volunteers are very active at crowd control. And so I was wondering, um, maybe you can talk a little bit about that in addition to anything else you'd like to say about this question. Yeah, so um, Schenectady is implementing a lot of the same rules that um, Saratoga is doing with tents being spaced at least 10 feet apart. Um, we also require that customers wear a mask um, when coming into the market. Um, and producers have to be handling their own products, things of that nature. Um, but yeah, crowd control has definitely been a huge challenge, um, especially with it getting warmer out, um, more folks want to come to market and hang out for a bit. And we have to really be uh, really be um, vigilant about asking folks to leave when we see um, folks of people gathering um, at market. And it's it's hard to break up people's gatherings because it's like there's not a lot of opportunity for people to do anything fun right now. And um, but we have to remember that safety is the most important thing right now. Um, and yes, safety of our customers is a very serious business and we really need to be making sure that all of the rules are being followed, but it doesn't mean we can't do it with a smile and make customers feel welcome in the space. Um, we have folks at the entrances, um, greeting people when they come in, offering them hand sanitizer, letting them know where vendors are located since locations are changing a lot within the market space. Um, we have people moving throughout the market, helping with crowd control. Um, and if they're breaking up any crowds that they see, they are asking folks nicely to do so. Um, and yeah, just keeping that positive attitude um, is really important to making customers feel like this is a space that they want to be in. And our vendors are also, um, they're still the same people um, that our customers are used to seeing before the pandemic and they still have the same attitudes when talking to customers and just keeping that um, that sense of uh, normalcy in the market is important and we try to really um, incorporate that. Um, I don't have anything else major in terms of the rules that I'd like to share, um, but yeah, like I just wanted to quickly mention that for folks who haven't been to the Schenectady Green Market, that our rules can be found on our website if you plan on attending this Sunday. Um, and we will have a new layout um, for folks and we'll make that available so you know where all of your customers are this Sunday. Oh, so I get to move again, maybe. <laughs> Okay, so um, my final question, we've got just a few minutes left, is actually about um, opportunity. Um, you know, as we all know, the demographics of the capital region are changing and, um, you know, it's the communities are definitely becoming a lot more racially and ethnically, ethnically diverse. And Asian Americans and particularly immigrants are, the fastest growing community in the capital district. So I actually was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what kinds of opportunities you think the markets could offer for Asians and also for other persons of color. And I'll let Cheryl go first on this one. Thank you, Himani. Um, so as a person of color, um, my goal is really to see more vendors who look like me at market. Um, I think it's really important um, to myself as a person of color and folks of color who are shopping at the market that they see um, more vendors of color and see that um, folks of color can really thrive in this space. And I feel that I've been using my um, other outlets and networks to help to build that 
at the market. Um, Kimani, you know that I work full time for Soul Fire Farm, um, which is a food justice nonprofit committing to um, ending racism within the food system. And that's actually how I met Kimani um, and encouraged Kimani to apply to the market. And uh, I'm really excited that she's with us. And I'm hoping to um, use those types of networks to um, encourage more folks of color to apply to be vendors at the market um, because that's something that's just really important to me. Excellent. And Emily, you know, we've talked about this a little bit in terms of our prepared food vendors um, that we really have quite an ethnic, quite an array of um, different um, different ethnicities represented among those vendors. Um, but what other opportunities do you see as existing at the Saratoga market for um, Asians and also for other persons of color? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. As you said, I think I think our biggest example would be um, the prepared food, and we've we've seen an immense uh, increase in in the cuisines and and people and cultures um, represented in that in the last few years. So that's been really um, really great to see. And as Cheryl said, you know, it's it's good to have vendors um, representing a wide array of of um, cultures and because um, I, I feel like that does make customers. Um, a little more comfortable to shop at a market, you know, if you see people who look like you. Um, and in terms of other other opportunities, um, you know, one thing one thing I was thinking of is is we do have um, we do have some vendors who uh, might not be actually of Asian um, heritage or, or ethnic, um, but they they do sell you know Asian vegetables or, or things like that, and um, we're always hoping to get some more representation in that and different kinds of um, ethnic foods because I think um, you know seeing seeing products from your home culture represented at the market makes you definitely more likely to to feel at home at a market and and to uh, to to get a sense of um, of home and in what you can make with the food you get at the market, um, but that that you know. Conversely, that also means that um, people who are not accustomed to those foods and not from that culture might see those foods and, and gain an interest in um, preparing the foods and, and learn how to prepare the foods. And I think that that misses too in a grocery store. You know, you don't you don't get a sense of what you can make with a certain type of product. So if you see something unusual, you might pick it up, but more likely you just don't know what to do with it. And you take a look at it and you you move on and get whatever actually is on your grocery list. So I think that um, having that that uh, representation of different kinds of foods and different kinds of vendors as well um, definitely presents an opportunity. But as I said, you know, we're we're always growing and we're always um, hoping to add more diversity to to our market. And um, we definitely do take that into consideration as well in applications. Um, so so I would highly um, you know highly encourage any any immigrants whether from asia or or anywhere else in our capital region to uh, to take a look at the, the the farmers market and um and and you know see if you see yourself represented or otherwise find find a way to uh, to become involved great thank you so i think we are out of time and i'm sorry that we're out of time because i feel like i could keep talking to both of you for hours but I do wanna thank you both for joining tonight's show. I'm Hamani Gupta Carlson and our guests have been Saratoga Farmers Market Manager, 